suicide mission. I'm gonna fight you, Steve. You never say, I'm gonna fight you, Steve. Hi there, my name is Sila Beck and the Rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. And it is Friday, Friday once again here on YouTube, and the weekend is ahead of you. The weekend is your oyster, uh, although I'm in lockdown, so there's really not that much difference between the weekend and the week. But, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully they they, they let you uh, shamble around. You know, a little like uh, you know, a little area around your your abode, where, wherever you're living, uh, wherever you are. Uh, uh, TV is our friend, movies are our friends, and uh, and uh, I like to open my video board once a week uh, and have a look inside. I have very strange things in there, strange and wonderful things. Uh, it you know, it's kind of like Medusa's head. You shouldn't look in there straight on because you will get turned to stone you will get turned to stone uh, uh so i like to go into the video vault with people i like to go in the video vault with people so uh you know to protect me from the brunt of the horror that one will find within the vault uh so the people we have joining us tonight uh the first person first person is not really he's not just a person he's not a person he's uh he's somebody uh, uh i would say is is an area is a zone is a zone of reality. Yeah, much like the Phantom Zone. The Phantom Zone, much better in the Superman movies than the Superman comic. The Phantom Zone, uh, but an even better type of zone. It's bigger on the inside than the out. It is, of course, No from the TARDIS Zone is with us tonight. How are you, No? I am good, my friend. How are you? Praise the good Lord. Holy, holy, holy is he, as we, uh, as they, as they, actually, that's that, that's in the uh, religious literature. That's the, the <laughs> angels turn to one another and go, holy, holy, holy is he. That's basically what they do. It seems a yeah. bit, bit of a strange way to spend your day, but that's what that's what they do for them. Can't argue. Uh, speak of strange ways to spend your days, but I'm sure this next guest, this next guest, has discovered many, many strange ways uh, to spend <laughs> days, uh, and it's been you know, uh, it's been a bit, bit, bit of a problem. It's been a bit of a problem, uh, uh, but he, he's he's finding a state of being within it. He's finding a state of being within his problem. It is, of course, problem being. How are you, sir? Calm, collected, and German. Conflict in German. <laughs> tonight, conflict in German. Uh, the movie tonight, of course, we're watching is The Life Aquatic. Uh, I'm going to give you my little intro into it in a minute. I, I have no idea what the panel is going to say. I'm watching the movie. I'm going, oh, this is going to be a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> this could go in any direction. Uh, uh, somebody who cannot go in any direction. What type of person who can only go forward and forward relentlessly? Actually, I was watching this movie and thinking, you know what? If you want like a good solid plot with a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, uh, you're probably better to go to his channel. Uh, his channel has a new movie up right now. I can't remember the name of it, but it's pretty darn good. It has, uh, a, you know, has very attractive. The Killing in Zone, it. isn't? Oh no, it's the, that's previous. No, no, that's the old one. He'll, he'll tell us about it. Bring on. It's very attractive. Yeah. Movie. With gun, with guns, covered in blood. You know, it's a mega geek movie. Mega geek. How are you, sir? I'm all right. I'm all right. How's everybody? Good. <laughs> good, good. The movie's What's called Bad Day. Bad day. Bad day. Yeah. Bad day. And it, yeah, yes, yeah. I got, again, everybody's link is in the notes. Uh, go, 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 uh, go and click on it. If you're looking for something to watch, it's like 90 minutes, right? <clears throat> yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's 90 minutes, and I can guarantee you, in a mega geek movie, you will have very attractive women, and you will have guns. I think that's <laughs> basically, you know, you've got me on board, right? <laughs> yeah, you have me. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, <laughs> finally jo jo joining us in the uh, uh, in the video vault tonight, uh, uh, we have we have a regal person. A regal person is who uh, who elevates us wherever he goes because he is uh, he has what royalty does. Royalty does ro royalty does elevate you know all the, all around us and gives us something to look up to. So of course I look up to this royalty. It is of course Birmingham's King of the Geeks, Dan Hamley. <laughs> <type of geeks. laughs> Hello, uh, it's good uh, How are you, sir? Yes. Well, I'm back. Yes, I had a week off last week. Missed you all, of course. Missed oh, all the all the revelry. What was the movie we did last week? <laughs> what what was the report? You Do you did? remember that? It was Pulp Fiction. Minority Report. Oh, yeah. Oh, Pulp Fiction. Go it was Pulp Fiction last week. I had to have a week off, obviously, because being being royal, I had to go and have a word with Prince Harry and Meghan, give him a there dry slap, go. talk him out. Yes, yeah, exactly. stop, to stop listening to his missus. Did they listen? Yeah. It don't look like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Fine. I'll no, no, be on Spitting Image. So that'd be interesting. Is, is yeah. it on yet? Can't promise anything. Uh, yeah. October 3rd, I think, isn't it? October 3rd. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, people who did listen, people who did listen, is the uh, producers of this movie, The Life Aquatic, which I can guarantee you, 
had an incredible pitch. I think Wes Anderson, who I like Wes Anderson's movies in general. I've only seen this once before. Uh, and I can get, and I remember liking it. And I remember liking it, saying, well, that's a really kind of cute idea. But I bet it had a fantastic pitch, which he went to all his friends with and pitched it to them. Once he got all his friends on board, he went to whatever studio, went to Harvey Weinstein, I would have thought. <laughs> it was 2004. Yeah, probably Harvey Weinstein. And he, and, and, and he said, I have this pitch. He pitched a movie, and it's kind of a fun little pitch of, of a movie. It's essentially uh, what, what happened in making a world out of those bizarre Jacques Cousteau like National Geographic esque uh, 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 seed documentaries. What, uh, what happens if you set something within that world and you put a real story, or at least say yeah, something close to a real story within it? And then he described the characters and uh, and bet somebody at the, at the uh, behind the desk went, "Yes, we'll do that. We'll do that." And I, I, for me, it works on several levels. Not completely. I think the performances are a delight. I enjoyed my two hours I spent with it. I think I I thought the, the performances were great. I love seeing all these people. I love William Defoe. William Defoe was great in this, uh, along with most of the cast with Jeff Goldblum, uh, Owen Wilson, uh, was it uh, was it uh, Michael Gambon and I, there's probably more people. Probably more people that that Angelica Houston, okay, yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Angelica Houston. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and so I just thought this movie is um a, well yeah the main character uh, um um bill bill, bill um uh, uh bill Mara's character spoke start smoking a joint towards the beginning of the movie and he's smoking uh smoking weed throughout the entire movie that i think may be an indication of the best way to watch this movie uh because it's visually beautiful just a little bit disjointed i think it was nearly there but I found it kind of sweet, kind of engaging. I'm glad I spent the time watching it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be going back to it again in the near future. So let's just go through the panel and we'll get everyone's overview of what we thought, of what everybody thought of that movie. Uh, no, are you with us, sir? What, what did you think of The Life Aquatic with Steve Sazu? Yeah, interesting movie. Um... Oh, yeah, just, that's where yeah, I am. Yeah, exactly. I, don't, I don't really know what to say, to be honest <laughs> with you. I mean, I enjoyed so a lot of it, but I don't know. It's just one of those movies. I think you have to be in the humor of of watching, and I don't think my mind was really a hundred percent focused on this. I mean, the second part of the the second half of the movie. I actually liked uh, the first half of the movie. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was interesting. I'm not totally slating this movie. It, it, it was. I agree with you. It's a good concept, a great idea, but I, I don't think it was executed um, well. And if yeah, I remember yeah. correctly as well, this movie it wasn't received very well. If, I'm, if I remember correctly, I remember it made, it made, it made a loss. It, but it, it made didn't do like three, three well. The average, you know. Oh, like... by the way, Rabbi, I just got a package. Cheryl's just had to come back from the post office and I need to get a package here. That should be a package. I hope that, 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 that's your package. That, that, well, that, I've that... got your name on it, so... And oh, there you go. Uh, oh, the package that yeah. Noel is referring to, he was a lucky winner in one, one of my weekly competitions. Hey, one second, let me just put <laughs> my channel. Here you go. I'm gonna, hey, it's me. Uh, I have the weekly competition. So hit that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button, and then you can have my competition. The prize this week is Judge Dread Origins. This is uh, pretty much what it says in the tin. Judge Dread, right <laughs> out of the cursed earth, it, it, on our mission that goes to very, very origins. And that's essentially what it is. You get a big uh, flashback sequence when he, when he's a young cadet judge with his brother Rico. All you need to do to win it: subscribe to the channel, subscribe in the in the uh, comments, the hashtag uh, judge, the cadet Rico. Oh well, we hear news from the the uh, the Tardis own household. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I just she's just come back, so I'm just grabbing. Oh, it, 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 did it arrive in one piece? There's no, uh, it was... it did. I'm actually opening up. Do you want me to open it up now to let you know what it is, just in case you know? Because I don't know what I don't know what you actually forgot what you what I even want. Oh, it's a good prize, it's a good bloody prize. It was one, it was one of the better ones. I read it roughly two or three right. weeks. Let's see. Oh, I know what it is. It's the it's the matrix, isn't it? It's the Matrix uh, complete set, ultimately. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> forgot we, yeah, I forgot we won the Matrix. That's how long it's taken me to mail it to you. 
So if you want to watch it, it. Thank you. We really appreciate it. I'll have it here. And yes, this seems to be uh, all good. Wrapped up well as well. I mean, I'm actually using the scissors to open this up. There you go. Yes, I oh, did. I, I did Chris about wrapping that up too. I'm going to keep your stamp as well. I like to keep the stamps. Okay. I'm a bit of a weirdo like that. I like, I like uh, keeping stamps. I've got a few from Australia as well, so... Oh, yeah. I have a friend who gets shot glasses from where we go. Anyway, I'm glad you're I'm glad it arrived one piece. Problem being, what's your basic thoughts of this movie? Um, yeah, it's a quirky, kind of laconic, uh, Bill Murray kind of movie. It's a very Bill Murray kind of movie. Yeah, it is a Bill Murray. Um, it, it, it's got a very, very nuanced humour to it. It's kind of, um, it's not black humour, I'd say, but it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of bit stoner humour. Um, a little bit, a little bit. Actually, I have to, I have to make making confession. I think I realised while, while watching this, I have a real soft spot for uh, uh, kind of like anti-hero, not anti-heroes, uh, which mm. Bill Murray's character is like. Pretty, I have a real soft spot for selfish, self-absorbed heroes because he's uh, a complex well, character. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you why. Because one of my favourite jobs I ever had. I worked on the uh, Jewish divorce court, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, if you if you're Jewish, you need a Jewish divorce before you can get remarried. It's called a get, right? And the uh, and so we we, we where, where we lived, we did about uh, on a good week we'll do four, on a great week we'll do nine, because everybody get everybody came from South America to to get a Jewish uh, our uh, a Jewish divorce. But the the guy in charge of it, the rabbi in charge of the divorce court, was pretty much exactly like this guy. It was, it was like. You know, like very self kind of like uh, so we kind of liked him at the same time yeah he's got that kind of um it is he is quite charming in his odd way um and it is a charming film in an odd way um yeah it's 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 a really unusual film uh i i kind of i still like it. i did it's one of those i did buy on dvd when it came out um and yeah, it is difficult to categorize. It is sort of in the league of its own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, it's in the league of Wes Anderson movies. You know, yeah, it, yeah. it feels like a Wes Anderson. But did you ever see the uh, uh, the stop motion movie he did with uh, uh, with Bill Murray again and George Clooney? No. It's really quite fun. The fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh, Bill oh, Murray. Yes, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, Bill Murray, and it plays a a badger, I think. Uh, but he, he, his body movement is just like it's very Bill Murray. You know, it, 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 <laughs> you can tell it's Bill Murray, even though it's an animated figure. So I don't know how they did that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, okay. That's, that's kind of, I can't think we're, we're yeah we're all in the same ballpark. Uh, Mega Geek, what, what what's your thoughts? Well, it's a typical Wes Anderson movie, let's face it. Um, this is, uh, I guess, the, one of the quirkiest films he's made. Actually, it isn't the quirkiest, tell you the truth. But um, I didn't find it boring. I didn't find it good, nor did I find it bad. It, it, it sits, because his movies always sits in the middle of, of bad and good, doesn't it? it? It's not exactly bad, but it's not exactly great or good, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, it's just full of odd characters and selfish selfish characters in there. And um, um, who's the who's the guy that played his son, or so-called meant to be his son? Um, uh, Owen, 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 Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson, yeah. Owen yeah. Wilson. He he's always a, plays those kind of characters, fighter. doesn't he? <laughs> oh, right. Well, I don't know. <laughs> the one performance, it? which yeah. actually is good. Uh, I actually find Tom Hiddleston's Owen Wilson to be better than Owen Wilson's Owen. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's it, 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 it's an interesting <laughs> film, and um, I like what he does with the characters. It, it's very the characters are not one way or the other. There's some there's some bits where um, Bill Murray does nice things, and there's some bits where he's completely and utterly selfish. Um, right. You know, and and what you what he what Wes Anderson likes to do to you with the characters is bounce you around with the characters. The characters are not one way. They're not good. They're not. They're not bad. They're not evil. They're just. They're just kind of bounce between good and bad and selfishness and stuff like that. All of them. If you look at all the characters, all of them are like yeah. that. Even even the reporters like that. Um, the the pregnant. I can't. Um, who plays that character again? I can't remember. She puts on a really good. Yeah, she puts on a really good English accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but that, it, that, yeah, it's enjoyable. That's all I can say. It's enjoyable, but the thing is, it's an acquired taste. And if you don't like his films, don't watch it. 
but I kind right, of right. agree with him. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I feel about it. It's it is an acquired taste, and if you're into these sort of movies, well then you'll enjoy it. I know I am into these sort of movies, but you know, again, we kind of seen this on time and time again, and. You know, Bill Bill Murray at the time he had this, and then he did another one with uh, Scarlett Johansson. If I remember, they were with, within a couple of years of each other, and they both movies weren't really. Well, I know the other one with Scarlett Johansson was received well and won a couple of awards, but this one kind of went under the radar. I don't know. It's like it's typical Bill Murray kind of performance, if you know what I mean. You know what you're mm. going to get with Bill Murray and all the other characters as well. Like you know the actors very well, so you kind of know what. Uh, it, 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 I don't know. It just uh, there's just something about it that I just can't put my finger on. But this is the kind of film that Hollywood goes crazy over because yeah, they're yeah, so I mean, original. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's good about itself. Like right? it's not yeah. bad. It's not a bad movie at all. It's just it's very hard to kind of. It's not good either. Whether it's it's very good or, or it's not, it's definitely not bad, but it's not great either. If you know what I mean, it's yep. just not. No, it's very hard. This movie wrecked me head. Mm. Uh, wrecked yeah, me. I, think, I think yeah, that's that's fair. You know, the, the, in terms of like yeah, what it was talking about, we'll get you down next. In terms of what it was talking about, there's this ongoing thread about fathers and sons and mm. parents. And I'm and there's, and there's this final thing that happens in the movie. We'll talk about when we get more uh, more into the movie, which I think is trying to tie it all together, but it just doesn't. It doesn't pull it mm. off to me because I think it's saying something. I'm not sure what it was. Uh, he, he always does that, doesn't he? he? Even done that in Royal Ten Bands about about parenthood. He, that yeah. seems to be a theme, doesn't it? Well, in yeah, most of his yeah. Movies, yeah. I think we're talking about him accepting something about himself. Dan, what what's your thoughts on this movie? Oh, well, I I have absolutely no problems in putting my finger on it. This film's crap. <laughs> it's crap. It's everything that I hate about about this yeah. kind of movie. About this kind of movie, it puts the viewer firmly last. Everybody else is having a considerably better time than the poor sod who sat down to watch this god awful film. Wow. Absolute <laughs> waste of time, and. I enjoyed your description of the plot, Rabbi, considerably more than the, the uh, two hours. Was it two hours? My God, this was unbearable. Absolute drivel. Total nonsense. Complete waste of a brilliant cast. I did. I hate it. No, I didn't. No, I didn't care enough to hate it. But it grinds my gears that I, mean, I wasted an hour and three quarters of my life on this absolute tat. It, look, it looks pretty in places. It's. This is just everything I hate about art. I love art films. Yeah. I'm the guy who gets the mickey taken out of him by his mates for liking art. If, look at them. It's the frigging flump. The flumps at sea. That's what this is. <laughs> it, yeah. I love certain things about the visuals of this are right up my street. The silly hand-drawn flags, the, the outfits, the, the, uh, the, the wetsuits. Yeah. The I, I would love this stuff. It looks like Archer brought to live action but unfortunately it's nowhere near as entertaining it's not as it's not as clever or as funny or as quirky as it thinks it is it's really self-conscious this film mm, and it made odd. me it made me want to track this Wes Anderson down to say look mate look look <laughs> yeah <laughs> really absolutely awful film and the first hour and a quarter it's just boring as beep Absolutely sensationally boring. I, swear, you know. I nodded off at around the one one hour twenty seven. I actually did fall asleep watching this. One hour and twenty seven minutes. Wait, what, what, the, what, what, the pirates. That was actually when it picked up. Yeah. Well, by that point, I, I, by that point, I was so annoyed that I'd had an hour and a quarter, uh, an half of my time wasted. Yeah. I, couldn't give, I didn't give a tinker's cuss. He, right. he could have brought he could have brought out I don't know pans people snogging with hot gossip, and I still would have thought it was terrible. <laughs> it was absolute absolute crap. Yeah. And even um, though the film rallied, even though the film rallied a little in the last twenty minutes, I can see that. And there were things that would have normally have won me round, but in this. No, 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 no. Yeah. And I've, ne I've never seen another film by Wes and Anderson yeah. before. Did On the strength of this, I won't bother again. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I would. Did you yeah. think this film was beneath? I, I, have this, I have this thing in me that's saying that this movie was beneath Bill Murray and the Oh, very, very much so. The yeah. thing is, Bill, yeah. Bill Murray does this. Bill Murray does this sort of thing brilliantly. Sleepy Bill Murray. Yeah. Yeah, who, who doesn't love Sleepy Bill Murray? But the Everybody problem does. is... The problem is, you stick Sleepy Bill Murray in a sleepy film, you get yeah. sleep, you get Sleepy Dan. 
And I suspect yeah. a lot of you out there are going to be sleepy as well. Just terrible. Absolutely wow. terrible. Okay. So, well, so you know, the cash. Well done, Dan. <laughs> Say what you mean, Dan. <laughs> I, I, I can't watch stuff like this. So, 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 yeah, no, I, like, I can't disagree with... I'm not disagreeing with you entirely. I didn't like... I mean, again, I found my two hours... I, I just had it like I was in pleasant company, and I did get the feeling that, you know, you had the stellar cast wanted to go on vacation to, yeah. to Peoples or wherever it was, where they, <laughs> I think they, where, they, where they filmed most of this stuff. Um, but there was bits of it uh, that we weaved into which you couldn't like separate out, which I really, really loved. I mean, I loved this, the, the, the bizarre, bizarre relationship with uh, William Defoe uh, towards Bill Murray, that, who, <laughs> who desperately seeks his approval and it views him as like a, a father surrogate thing. Well, yeah, be, before we get into that, let's just talk about the plot because the plot's not going to be hard to, to, to encapsulate. The, the plot is essentially. Um, was Anderson went up to you know, whoever it was uh, to Bill Murray said, "I got this great idea for a movie. This is what we're going to do. You know those old National Geographic uh, documentaries by uh, Jacques Cousteau, and they're very, very clunky and everything's very staged and it's very like, and it's just kind of like weird. And we it's a it's a foreign reality. Let's set a movie in that universe. In that, I love all that stuff, Rabbi. I love all that. You're right." Okay, but, again, but, but they didn't well, deliver, did they? I think, I think the connected tissue of the story that to to put in there just didn't come, just didn't gel. It just didn't come together uh, and, and hold together. So again, I believe. So the the basic plot is you have uh, 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 Bill Murray is uh, as pre uh, premiering his new uh, documentary, the the Tiger Shark Part One, where they go, the, the, you start seeing it, and then it turns out that uh, uh, his 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 Deep, his good friend, maybe lover, you know, I couldn't really tell. His good friend uh, that he's very, very connected to is eaten by a strange type of shark, um, sending Bill Murray into a mission to go back on, do a next uh, 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 a documentary to find the shark uh, and kill it. <laughs> it's like, like, like Ahab. Yeah, exactly. But again, there's this like this little bit in it where, where he comes comes out of the sea and tells him that his friend's been eaten. And he's like, and he says, "Oh no, he's got crazy eye." And just and he just mm. in his face, and his eyes are a little bit redder than normal. Uh, you know, it, it's, again, Bill Murray is smoking a lot of weed. His character is smoking a lot of weed for this movie. I get the feeling everybody is. I guess they they're having a really good time, and they all put in you know a stellar performance. So so at this. Uh, uh, movie uh, 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 premiere. A young man comes up to him as a, as a Owen Wilson and says, uh, "I think you're my father." You know, and uh, and Bill Mur Bill Murray uh, knows of him, uh, and uh, basically he starts parenting him from that from, from the beginning of that from that moment on. And you're never sure if he is the father. I think it I think it basically gets uh, uh, revealed later on that he was a very lonely kid in in wherever it was in. In Nebraska or wherever he was in 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 uh, yeah, America, and he wrote to Steve Zazu, uh, and his mother told him, "Oh, that's your father, right?" And I think that that gets the feeling that 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 might be what happened because they, they say at some point in the movie that he he can't have children; he's he's not able yeah. to. Um, so yeah, so you have this weird father son surrogate father son relationship with uh, Owen Wilson and Bill Murray, and they spend the next I would say half hour of this movie. Trying to get the money together to go on this, uh, uh, go on this next next uh, 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 documentary, right? Uh, and we, and then Owen Wilson happens to 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 of uh, of have the money that that they, they that they can finance it because his mother recently committed suicide because uh, she she to escape from the pain of ovarian cancer. So that seemed a little bit dark. That seemed a little bit needlessly dark. Mm -hmm. they, they threw that in. And uh, they go on this. Uh, uh, they go on this adventure to um, uh, find the shark. To find the shark, and, and the yeah, you know, it, and it's supposed to be wacky things in shoe, but they really don't. Now on the boat, there is Kate, Kate, uh, Kate Blanchett, who is about four or five months pregnant, uh, and with the publisher of this magazine she's working for, she's a reporter. And she's doing a story on Steve, Steve Zazu, the, the Jacques Cousteau uh, character, the uh, uh, Bill Murray. Um, so fine, yeah. They and they set, uh, you know, and they they set see uh, set sail. 
His wife doesn't go with him. Angelica Houston, his wife, do doesn't go, go with him because he thinks it's a bad idea for some reason. And she used to be married to Jeff Goldblum, who was another uh, ocean explorer uh, scientist who's a lot more successful and has a lot, you know, has a lot better rig. He has this big boat, whereas you know, Bill Murray's got this little rackety boat. Uh, and they, yeah, and basically they set sail. This motley crew set sail together. Um, does anything have anybody have anything they would like to to interject? It's a, it's a, um, this is like forty minutes of the movie. Yeah, um, basically, um, Wes Anderson he always tries to basically um, mess with your mind when it comes to characters. And if you notice most of his films, he does that. So basically he gives you someone like William Defoe. William Defoe is nothing like the characters he played in other movies. He's completely different, completely self-absorbed. And every character, he does that to every character. So basically he's trying to, he's trying to give you something that you don't expect. But unfortunately with Wes Anderson, he keeps making the same thing all the time. If you look at the Royal Tenon Bands, if you look at the other films that he's made, it's the same thing with all the characters. Yeah. So I, I guess the people that like this film like his style. I did, yeah. slow that, that, and meandering and, you know, and very, yeah, very slow and very kind of um, uh, uh, weird and, 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 and odd. And that's his style. And this is the type of film that he makes. But unfortunately, this film is not one of his best. I like Royal Tenenbaums, but I didn't really I like this one too much. And you're right. It looks like everybody's on drugs, you know, because they that. don't they don't react how they're supposed to when a situation it, it, approaches it them. A, uh, a late summer vacation. They took three months in the late <laughs> summer and they went to this, they went to Italy. And they had a wonderful time, and they made yeah. this move, and they earned it basically paid this move. Um, yeah, paid this move off. So yeah, in this picture here, there's one character who I really, really liked in the movie. Uh, you can see the the guy appearing behind uh, uh, Bill Murray, the guy with the mustache. He is the, mm. the man from the Bond Company to make sure they don't overspend. Uh, who actually turns out to be a really cool character in the you see. Yeah. I mean, like this dweeb. You know, the first thing they when, when they when they first meet him, they go, yeah, you know, don't. Bill Murray insults him some way, and the Bond uh, Bond guy's like, yeah, but I'm I'm yeah, I'm a human being too. He's like, mm. yeah, that's right. Okay, that's fair enough. So there's, there's a lot of like these weird little. I but that's, that's what he does. He 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 builds up a situation where they say something to Bill Murray, and he's supposed to get really angry, but Bill Murray doesn't. He just goes, oh, okay. And he just walks off. And most of the characters do that. Like, why, when he when he goes to Angelica Houston, why aren't you coming with me? She says something, one line, and then she's off. They don't have any discussion. They don't argue. Do you know what I mean? And those, uh, that's his trait. That's Wes Anderson's oh, so, trait yeah. in most characters. They don't, they, don't look, they don't look or sound like they give a toss about anything. Exactly. So but how can I? How yeah, Exactly. Yeah, you know, I know, I know what you're going to say, Dan, and I agree, totally agree. Um, as I said, I couldn't connect with any of the characters in the film. How could you get involved in something as 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 bland as this? But that's his style, and a lot of critics even like the his out, style. even the outsider that they bring in, in in Owen Wilson's character, he's exactly the same too. So he is. you just think, oh, it's just wipe off. I tell you one thing, I did like though the animation placed yeah. oddly in places mm, like that. The, the um, so yeah, that like the what is it, the crabs. The yeah. colored crabs, whatever. Yeah. You look at that crab, you think they're being clever by doing something like that. Yeah. They're not being clever. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, it's this movie. Look, it, again, we're not saying it's a bad movie, but this is, oh, yeah. this is one, unless you know, <laughs> you're, you're a fan of this guy, you're, you're going to enjoy. But if you're watching it like me, and I do like artsy movies, but this, no. Give me Clockwork Orange any day of the week or Bronson, a film of that ilk. But this, this kind of disappointed me. Uh, uh, Bill Murray is Bill Murray, to be honest with you. William Defoe is just, you know, that character is cringy. Sorry, but that I know, character. But I liked it. I, I just um, felt it's like his desperate need. Oh, Wilson, as his son, thought he was pathetic. And we'll talk about what he does in the movie as well. Um, he plays the, the same Bond. character in Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah, he, he does. Plays the same character. He crap over and over and over. Um, <laughs> Everything, doesn't he? Man, I do, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Jeff Goldblum. I mean, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. You you get what you, you oh, see. Exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, it that's what really really said to me. It felt like that all of these these actors and actresses got to play kind of a an exaggerated version of themselves. While Stone, as you said, yeah, um, 
That that's what it was to me. I mean, a Angela Houston hasn't been in a movie in a while, uh, and then they bring her in to do this, and then as uh, Megan Geek said, that other one with uh, Gene Hackman, um, Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah, okay. that one, which was actually which is actually miles better than this. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. that movie. I, I grant, yeah. But this, but it's, 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 the thing, the thing is, for I know Dan is, but uh, this is not a movie that floated me about. To be quite honest with you, it's going to get a low rating as well. I you, just, you, you know what you're going to get with Wes Anderson. I said even I the know, scene when he's sick of it, like we're to, uh, Tarantino. Yeah, yeah. Kind of know what we get with Tarantino all the time, and this feels the same to me. It so does, I yeah. what someone said last week when they said about Tarantino. That uh, you were saying, you know, you see this all the time, so it becomes old. It's the same with this. We see this all the time, and this is old. Even Dan is actually yawning because I'm even that bored and talking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no. No. I mean, the more you can talk about it, the more annoyed I get about it. I wish you'd stop picking two hour movies that are crap. Though. <laughs> I, mean, I, I wasn't, I wasn't annoyed though. I mean, you know, I mean, as I said, it's okay. The movie's okay. It's not great or anything like that, but. I can honestly truly say it's not it's not the worst thing I've seen. I think um I think no, High Rise was the worst thing I saw. It's quite watchable. It's quite watchable. I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. Uh, not in a massive way, but it wasn't sort of a film right. that makes me want to go out and watch it again and again. The review for this movie is mostly harmless. Yeah. No, second second part of this movie I actually did enjoy. It's the first half I, was, I, yeah. just, can't, I, I just can't get me. I just can't enjoy it. But what was the scene at the end as well? I didn't get that scene at the end. It was just we'll come to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Was that kind of a like a, a, a kind of a metaphor or something? I, you know? I don't know. I don't know what yeah. it is. By the way, just before we move on this, one, one, the one thing I wanted to talk about is something I really liked in this scene was he's having this interview with, with, with Kate Blanchett. And far more interestingly, this must have been animated, was this uh, killer whale in the background. He's just bobbing around and doing mm -hmm. stuff. I really got into this movie is really designed to be watched high. It really is. I like <laughs> about it. It's like, well, why? Yes, it, it should come on. Come, come with some kind of warning. It, it's for it's for stoners who like stroking their beards and looking intellectuals, grasping hold of a book well, by well, you know well, Descartes or something. I should have liked a lot a lot more. Then that be that be the case. That sounds like me. <laughs> But I do um, like I do like some of the things that he does. Like for instance, when they were describing what was on the boat, they split the boat in half. It was oh like God, a, you know, right. and they went up and down. I thought that was yeah. I was thought that was quite neat actually. Like, but, you know, yeah, they had they had this fantastic set. They built the entire boat, and they keep going from room to room, from floor to floor, up and down. And it's that, bloody dangerous. <laughs> the, the visual sense in this movie, I think, is, is, is it looks great. I think this movie, mm. I just I enjoy looking at it. Right? That mm. that's yeah. Um, so anyway, so uh, else it? Bill Murray is slightly turned on by 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 Kate Blanchett, uh, as is o uh, 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 Owen Wilson, um, and they go so searching for 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 the shark. They break into Jeff Goldblum's uh, uh, like lab, like sea lab, to to be able to uh, uh, um, uh, track the shark and steal everything they can from there, including his coffee maker. Right, <laughs> which I quite oh, like. Yeah. I love that thing. Yeah, and so they uh, uh, they go uh, lo uh, looking for the shark, and they go into. I hope I haven't missed anything out, but they go into uh, uh, unprotected waters, right? They go because he's Bill Murray's like, look, your way takes four inches. This is an inch and a half. Yeah, yeah he so he's going against the warnings of one of his um, interns, right? He's warning, this is this is uncharted territory, and he's just like, nah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> It'll be fine. We'll be fine. And of course, they go into go into un uh, uh, uncharted territory. And they get and they encounter well what what Arnold Wilson calls uh, um, hijackers. By the way, be, before we go forward, the soundtrack for this movie is freaking awesome. Yeah, uh, that's why this movie really stuck in my head because I got the soundtrack and I listen to it quite often. The soundtrack is a lot of acoustic David Bowie stuff sung by uh, this black guy in the background. Who <laughs> won the pictures? Uh, it was a pretty good. Plus, just some really great, some great. Uh, I can't remember the uh, the track, but some really, really great track. Uh, one one of my, my my favorite parts of the movie is the uh, uh, the they they get boarded and they see says he, the Owen Wilson says that you know the the hijacker says you know in the sea we call them pirates right so um, they have them like like handcuffed or like they, you know their hands tied they're blindfolded they're taking the 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 bomb guy with them. 
uh, as uh, as a hostage, and they steal his safe full of money. Yeah, they ask him, "Do you, you know where's your safe?" He's like, "We do not have a safe." And it cuts to one of the documentaries where they where, where they show the safe. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. Which I just enjoy. Anyway, so so Bill Murray uh, snaps. He can't take any more. And there's what is that track? Now I'm actually going to look it up. It goes. The problem being, you're a a resident. bit Bauhausy, didn't it? Like um... I'm actually looking up the, uh, um, the like... soundtrack is actually great in this movie. Yeah, the it one really is. That I can actually praise with high praise is the soundtrack. Even when they go on the rescue mission, which you see the the music through that is actually fantastic. Um, and that's where the movie actually picks up for me. It's the second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, Search and Destroy is the name, name of the track. Uh, no idea who it's by, but it's really cool. Um, as it, yeah, as Bill, Bill, Bill Murray goes to Devo. Oh, sorry? It's uh, Mark Motherspell, member okay. of Devo. So still don't know them. Still don't know them. Oh, they're great. No, it's sort of like a post punk kind of uh, yeah. Band. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, for, for, for the next half hour, the movie kind of has a cohesive plot that picks up. They go, uh, they're rescued by by Jeff Goldblum uh, with his incredibly, you know, much better boat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they go in search of the, they get refitted and they go to look for the pirates to yeah. get Bond guy. Uh, yeah. And yeah, Bill Murray's just got great lines in it, like saying, you know, I've never seen a Bond guy stick out his neck like that before. You know, you know what was funny and what I did find hilarious in this though? Do you know when they go on the rescue? Uh, when they're even when Bill Murray is on the boat and he's shooting the pirates, it's yeah. like he's rolling the gun so awkward. It's like he's he's firing the gun erratically, but he keeps hitting people. Right, <laughs> right, right. And he does it like a boss. He does it like a boss. Like, and, he, like, and, and the way they're running a little red hat on him, bopping his head on the top of his head. Like there is some funny parts in it. I thought the the fight scenes were hilarious because they were so so. Because everyone thinks he, everyone everyone thinks he makes it up. Everyone thinks he's, he's he's staging everything, but clearly his life really is this crazy. Yeah, and he's so used to it. He's just so cavalier. He just like wanders into the room like bang, 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 bang. Yeah, he doesn't care. yeah. It's, it's, care. I love the part where he goes in to rescue actually Jeff Goldblum, and Jeff Goldblum's character looks at him. Are you here to rescue me? And he just looks at him, and then he, he gets shot, right? Well, obviously, we know he survived, but he gets shot, right? And then Bill Murray then pulls out his gun. They're shooting at him with about 20 guns. He just, he just walks in. Trying to fix the gun so he can shoot. And then he starts with, oh, yeah. The, the fight scenes, I, I loved the, the gun scenes because it was hilarious. Um, yeah, but, I mean, that, yeah, that was a part. I laughed out loud at those parts, but... I mean, every time, every time, Noel, just like you've said, every time Jeff Goldblum is even in shot. I mean, just look at that. Just look at that. The, uh, the screenshot there. Every time Jeff Goldblum is in shot or speaks, lifts this film. Can see. Yeah. He yeah. is the other element. He's the sort of the contrast that this film needed more mm -hmm. of all the way through. Because everything that you've you've all just said about that central character is absolutely true. Is really really clever. And I'm so. And you know, I feel. I feel cheated. Yeah. Out of, I feel cheated out of a better film. Yeah. by the geezer who who put it together, because what? all of that is true. All of that is really clever. All of that is nuanced and 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 something worth receiving. But the way it was communicated, it yeah, shot, shot himself in both feet. Yeah, I agree with you. If Jeff Goldblum was more in this movie with Bill Murray, I think we'd be looking at a completely not only a completely different move, but different tone. And I actually think it would have worked. Because yeah. that moment at the end where he says, "Look, we don't make very good husbands." Yeah, I know. I get the impression. I, I've not seen any of these other films. I get the impression these films aren't dialogue heavy, particularly. Yeah. But but there's other ways of of bringing drama and of br and of bringing weight and, and pushing points like that. You don't necessarily have to be uh, Aaron Sorkin. You know, well, you, Goldblum, you Goldblum and Murray are definitely well, Goldblum, that's that line I that suppose they are supposed to yeah. don't make good husbands, do we? But I have an excuse because I'm a little bit gay, right? And then they have the point. <laughs> that's, a great point. Off, that's the line. That's what he actually says, Jeff. Yeah, Goldblum, yeah, yeah. Bill, Bill Murray goes, Yeah, we don't make great husbands, do we? Uh, I have an excuse because I'm a bit gay. That's what uh, uh, Goldblum's character says to Bill Murray. That's right. Bill, right. Bill Murray's been always throughout the mood. Throughout the movie, he keeps uh, peppering that in. It's like, I'm sure he's a raging queer or something. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't pick up on that either, but I did like the way that they hugged. 
which is just like really sort of natural and a little bit tacky. He sort of tapped his belly a little, and yeah. you could see even though even though they they were kind of rivals in some respect, albeit smiling yeah, rivals. A moment there, they did. There was yeah. a nice moment, and it, the, the, when one of very very few nice moments of mm -hmm. honesty and of humanity. Real humanity, though, I felt in the film. Yeah, and I love the scene at the end, which I think this is the screenshot of it, where they're all looking for the shark. And then right, when right, you right. But we'll get to that part. I don't want to ruin it. But the, the last, the, the scene where they're in the submarine, they're looking for the shark. All of that is 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 very good until we see the shark, of course, because the shark is poor, very poor CGI. I'm sorry, couldn't. Uh, it, it was in keeping with the, uh, the sort of crabs and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was animation. It was animation. Yeah. It was um, stop motion. Stop motion. Yeah, I didn't like stop it. Motion. I thought it was stop motion. Well, also, I, did you guys yeah. notice the ring, the blue ring, after a Bill, Bill Murray was shooting at everybody and killed everybody, and he mm. he's he talking to the people tied up. There was a, like a blue ring in the sky. Yeah, mm. yeah. Was, um, yeah that was some, what, that was something about he talked about. That. What was that? He said it was the northern lights or something. Yeah, like it, there was a sound, wasn't there? So they, apparently with. Uh, the northern lights, you get um, like a sound that comes oh, out right. of the sky. So it's weird. Yeah, all electrical that stuff. That was beautiful, actually. That was a beautiful shot. Um, I like that. Um, but again, I, I agree with Dan on some levels. This You do kind of feel cheated. This this movie had so much potential. Um, and unfortunately, I know you said, Rabbi, you know, it was ne it nearly there. I'd actually have to disagree. I'd say, I think it's way off, uh, to be quite honest with you. Um, even the scene at the end, I, I just don't know what's going on there. I don't know why he's sitting on the set of the Lord. They're all yeah. watching the movie, and then the kid comes out to him. He hands him his son's ring, which I found a bit weird, unless that is his son, that kid. I just don't no, get what the kid is going on about anyway. What what I think they were trying to say, but I'm, I'm I it, it, they didn't do it well enough. They really have no idea. I think this whole thing was about him coming to terms with his childhood and his relationship with his parents, and the and because he had the kid on his at the end when the kid sits on his shoulders and he walks away with the kid. Like I think that's just basically him being able to. But you shouldn't be saying I think, should you? You should I have no know. idea. The film, exactly. the film exactly. should be more clearer than it is. Exactly. And I agree with yeah. Dan. Yeah. That, that's. But I mean, I agree with you. If if that's the message you wanted to send, well, it certainly is a bit of a mixed message. I still I don't get it. Like they they focus on the center chair as well. The fact that he's not there, he's not sitting there watching mm. the movie when they're talking about the people that they've lost along the way and the journey, and their faces are all stone faces, and you can see that they're upset watching. And he's just outside having a cigarette with his award beside him. Yeah. But do you, do you guys think that they he deliberately did stuff so that it could be as quirky as possible so that critics could really like it? Like, for instance, when he's talking to Jeff Goldblum, he has like a yellow sofa on his boat. You know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it just looks really odd. Yeah. And why would he have a sofa on the boat? But what I'm saying is that do you reckon it was deliberate that because some directors, I know they go out the way to do really oddball things so that the critics yeah. will like them more so than yes. the audience. Stanley yeah. Kubrick used to do that a lot. Do you remember? He used the attention to detail. He used to put things in his story that, you know, you'd be watching the movie, but visually there'd be something going on in the background because he put all the attention to detail into it. Mm. I mean, look, yeah, uh, again, that's why I love Stanley Kubrick. Uh, if you're going to do this movie just falls flat, I'm sorry. Uh, it, I really should look, again, I'll say it, the second half of this movie, I actually didn't mind as much. I, I enjoyed it. And the boat is actually... Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's the great. Is, I have to be honest, the boat is deadly. But see the way the boat is designed. Look at it. I mean, look at the way they even showed you there. You can see all the different rooms and how it's laid I out. Like the and I, I it's great like the when they're walking through this boat, though. I do like this shots when they're walking through the boat, especially when Bill Murray and Owen Wilson are walking through when he wants to have a word with them over the journalist. And they're walking through the boat and they go up the stairs and they go into all the different rooms. Right. You know, that's kind of trying to show you the scale and, and the different. Because he, he even goes into one room and he goes, I thought you were gone. And he goes, no, I want to find the shark. And he goes, well, you're getting an A intern and just walks out of the room. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Little stuff like that yeah. was good, but it, it's this movie. Look at the first hour of, the, of a movie like this. 
if if you don't if you can't get your your audience engaged or they as dan said fall asleep well then you've got you, you you haven't done your job and it doesn't matter if the second act of this movie is slightly better than the first act it's tainted because the first act is so terrible in my opinion so uh, I, 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 this I, I, movie, I, I, I loved yeah. for half of this movie i, I know I, it was just disjointed for me and, and, and the characters, that's exactly the right word, disjointed. Yeah, that, that's exactly the right, what's wrong with it. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. Uh, yeah, there's there's great pieces, but the connective tissue uh, just doesn't hold together. But I just want to point out this one thing which I really loved uh, was these two dolphins with cameras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weird characters who they would try and get them to like go and spy on people. That's another great actor in, in this that, that nobody ever uh, notices. A guy called Noah... Uh, Wiley Hawley, I can't remember, but he's, he's no, always... Hunt, yeah, no, no, uh, he's uh, no Huntley, isn't it? The Australian actor, he's yeah, uh, yeah. In, um, uh, yeah, but he's, he's, he plays he's... Hitler in Preacher, and yeah, right, yeah, exactly. yeah. And he's great in that. He's got he's Australian, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I never saw the last episode of Preacher, I got I got bored with it. It's what no, no. season either. But you know, you know, this whole, I mean, the whole set was created for, you know, the inside of the boat was created for the film. And you can see that every shot they have, like in every um, a room, was done in such a way that when you have a single shot on them, there's something Very nice cool. about it. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so I mean, a lot of money was spent on this, but I agree with Dan. It's wasted money because he wasn't thinking of the audience. He was just being yeah, pretentious no, and sticking things in, good. you know. That critics were like rather than the audience wouldn't, right. wouldn't you know didn't consider the audience at all with this but anyway yeah, listen, the audience is definitely secondary we are you know like people in a gallery looking at at at, at something rather than you know uh okay. yeah, being interacted with it uh mm. get, yeah yeah so yeah listen honestly i think um i don't think there's much there's much else to say about this movie is it it's, I, I think we're all i think we're all exactly where we came in we're all like <laughs> but you know the you know the best the best Bill Murray film, yeah. one of the best ones is a film called um Saint Vincent. Anybody seen that? No. no. That's no. That, that that's what I mean. Nobody knows about that film, but it's brilliant. It stars um, <laughs> Melissa much. Melissa yeah. McCarthy, Naomi Watts. Uh, um, uh, if you yeah, ever get the chance to see it, it's really good. Well, as soon really as you mentioned Melissa McCarthy, that's an honor. Well, she she <laughs> she, it, she doesn't play Melissa. But it was before All she right. was famous. Well, I'll give it a go. There are one or two of her movies that I actually do like, where she's not it's being Melissa same, McCarthy, yeah. and yeah. she's actually very good when she doesn't do that kind of role. She's actually a great actress. So I wish she'd do more. Of that, yeah. to be quite honest with you. But uh, no, we're not fit. Rabbi, do the last act of this movie, man. You said we're nearly okay, finished. So, so, that is that is one thing I actually do want to praise. So, okay, I want so, to pray so, so the 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 the, fi the 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 final part of it is they go in the sub something. They they I'll say it's there's a very important plot point. You're right. Uh, they go. Uh, they basically add the money after they after they get to the pirates. They've lost this. They they get the safe back. But there's a big hole in the back of it there, so uh, they, they don't know what to do. Uh, Bill Murray's a bit despondent, and Owen Wilson says, "Come, on, we'll go flying and see if we can find the shark." Uh, they go flying to look for the shark, and the helicopter crashes, uh, killing o was it, o was it Owen Wilson. The the, the 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 bits where they're like have these disjointed uh, images flash before their eyes as they're crashing. That was very good. I like that. Yeah. I like that as well. Um, I, you know, that, but this kind of turned me off, to be honest with you. I just didn't understand why they're killing off the character or what that a no, added. Me neither. It, it, it left me cold. That, that whole well, it's, it's full circle, isn't it? Back to, you know, how he lost um, his closest friend on, on, on the last time he was right. hunting this shark. Yeah. So I think it was like a full circle. Because I know it's saying something, but I'm, yeah, and I'm, I'm not so stupid. I should be able to work it out, but I have no idea. I have no idea, you know, what, what, what they're trying to say with it. I don't know. Well, they did have a moment where they reconnected, and then they decide, then, as you said, to get on this this helicopter, and then it does crash, and then you see Bill Murray come up through the the waves, and he's screaming for his son, and his son does answer him back. So I don't, I, unless I actually missed it, but what happened after that? Did he? How did he die? That's what I can't understand. I know they. I, I, I the know water. Carrying oh. him to the beach. All right. Well, um, yeah. Well. 
Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, I, I like that moment, but the moment where they go into the submarine, they all decide that they're going to go down and have a look, feck it, let's do it, and all they right. all go into the submarine together, every single one of them, and they go down into the, that whole, that whole lot, yeah, that whole scene I did enjoy um, until the shark. I, yeah, that, that whole scene was somehow was kind of like cathartic for, uh, um, Bill Murray's cat character helps him get well, it's over validation because I mean everyone had thought he'd lied or made the whole thing up. Yeah, his wife. And he has know. a line, doesn't he? Where he's sitting at the where he's sitting and he's piloting the, the the sub, and doesn't he? He says a line and he breaks down. I think. Oh, I hope people. I hope people remember me or something to that effect or something like. I, 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 think, that's what, I think that's what the whole point of it was because. He knew his son existed, but he kind of didn't acknowledge his son's existence. You know, that sort of way. And then in this, he wanted, as you said, throughout the movie, he's trying to be validated all the time. And then he finally realizes that, you know, his life's work hasn't been for nothing. He's not a joke. And he does have that moment where he cries and they all put their hands on his, on his shoulder. Yeah, that, that got me. Uh, yeah. Right. I, I did it. You were right, but they they did lose a lot of people along the way. But that shark, even there, looking at it there in the screen, that's the scene where that shark bites that little baby shark. There, it was ridiculous. That, <laughs> that was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I, yeah, I just, I really think that was a uh, uh, creative choice. The rescue was fun, though. I've got to admit. The rescue, yeah, was yeah, the rescue was great. Yeah, yeah really hilarious. Okay, it's it's kind of like a Saturday Night Live sketch, which is. It was good. It's good. then it was kind of go on for a bit too long, and it's kind of dead. Then it was good again. Yeah, it did again. I just disjointed. I think no, really, <laughs> that was the exact right word. It's just the connective tissue to hold this together, which should have been this emo this deeply emotional story. I got the feeling there's this like real emotional growth story going on there with him, uh, Bill Murray accepting something about himself or something. But I, I, I don't know what it is, so I don't know what it is. So, you know, that's where I am with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as I said, it was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't, yeah, wasn't brilliant. Yeah. It's, it's a critics movie, put it that way. It's yeah, for the critics. I'm sure there's, there was some reason that he walked off with the kid on his shoulders at the end. Um, but, but, but you could just see everybody doesn't care about. It, uh, we don't okay. care what we it takes the kid so what you know we've gotten to the point where we don't care <laughs> you know none of us care about any of the characters so we just yeah. accept the ending you know, there is. yeah it's a weird one it's like you don't, you don't particularly care. i mean you're kind of a, a passive viewer but it, you are i mean it, it was the bit where at the end you know the, it showed his you know the the, the mask slipping somewhat and, and seeing some actual emotion from him um mm. that that really that really got me yeah, right, did. right, right. That, that, I mean, that was like again, but it's just there's something to do with like parenthood or something or fatherhood or something. I'm not really sure what. Mm. So hey, there, look, there you go. Um, look, if you're channel surfing and you have, <laughs> uh, and it's on. Wait, wait, hold on. Sorry, um, because somebody said how did um Wilson die? He got shot. He got shot in the helicopter. He got shot in a helicopter. By who? I don't know. I remember seeing the scene where it was crashing and it, and there was like blood. The window breaks, right? I and then there's that, blood. I no, that, it wasn't blood. That was wasn't the, it? No, what happened was is the, the, the propeller of the helicopter. Oh, I see. Flying. That was its, it's not, right. Oh, I thought he got that shot. Was, that was the fluid, and that's why the helicopter crashed into the sea. And he, Bill Murray's character says, Well, we're gonna this is gonna be saw one. And they uh, crashed into the boat. I don't know how we that's what I'm trying to say because he survived the initial crash. And I'm he like, did, how yeah, did he, did. How did he die? I, I think I, I just figured he got injured in the crash and he died from his injury. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 There was blood, there was blood in the water. He says he's okay, and then the next scene we see a coffin. And I'm like, but well, blood was blood on the lens, that's for yeah. sure. And then the I, water. I wondered who was actually dead. I wondered that for a good two or three yeah. minutes. Yeah. And again, it's inconsequential. They they don't care, so why should I? Where's the thing? They put a captain's feckin' hat on the coffin, and I'm thinking, did the captain of the ship die? I didn't think it was on Wilson's character. And then I'm looking no, at the one who's standing beside the coffin, and I'm saying, oh, Owen Wilson's not there. His son is dead. I said, what the hell? How did that happen? Well, yeah, it, 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 here, what's it? I think it, it wasn't this. Happened. There is the bit where um, Bill Murray carries him to the beach, and there's blood all over um, 
Wilson. So oh, I think right. that it was he, it was because of his injuries. He, you know, something happened in a helicopter when when it hit the sea. So so uh, yeah, I it made sense oh, that he the was dead. Could have hit him then as they crashed the propeller. Could have hit him. I yeah. didn't. See yeah, it. I'm saying it's confusing because the next scene then you see is obviously the coffin, and I'm like, oh, yeah. someone's dead. But yeah, I didn't get that. Why kill him off after they reconcile and they kind of have a moment together where Bill Murray says to him when he's lying on the ground with his, you know, with his hand on his head and he's like, I was trying to think of a nickname for you, do you know? But that's that's because what's what Wes Anderson does. He he get you know, he just makes each scene or each character do something that you don't expect. He'll kill off a yeah. character because he wants to kill him off and it makes no sense. That's what he does. That's that's his filmmaking style. So you know. yeah, you, can't, you can't argue with that. That's pretty much what he does. No. Okay, so honestly, I just don't think there's anything more to say about this movie. If, if, if anybody else has anything to say, I think speak now or forever hold of it. Shall we go and do it? Go on, Dan. <laughs> oh, I, 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 just, I just think it's noticeable. It's noticeable that every single still image from this is, is really pretty. There's lots to see. Yeah. You know, the colours are really interesting. Everything about it is interesting apart from the film itself. Absolutely right. horrendous. You know what? I'd give You're it, right. I'd give it a... Be a stun, and I agree with Dan. He's right. Visually... How, do we score them out of 10? Do we, remind me, do we score them out of 10? Yeah, yeah, we score it out of 10. Sorry, just yeah. one more thing. Do you remember that scene where they chuck the um, the coffin over with, with yeah. um, what's his name, body in there? And then you have Angelica Houston in the sub. And it's just her face in the circle, and the the thing passes her, and she's smoking. What was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> what was that all about? That's Angelica Houston, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm saying. She. They that. were. Where, you know, when you look on the back of a uh, look on a, a back of a, of a box of ice cream or something like some sort of packet of of dessert that you've got to make up yourself. That's a serving suggestion for the entire film. Smoke an enormous spliff. I did. I did yeah. like the bit. I did like the bit that, that the thing that made me laugh was when they they killed one of the hijacked the, the pirates and then they're, they're about to bury him over the edge of the water and then that that ship that um, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, right. What do we do with the body? Chuck it on the other side. Yeah, on the other side. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there were lots of bits like that, and you know those mm. bits. Were Dispersed throughout the movie. That's it. It's, it's peppered. It's it peppered to make me go, okay. Yeah, yeah. like it, 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 it regularly enough to make me like say, fine. I'm still on board. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of Bill Murray um, sort of quips. I think they're probably ad hoc. You know, he probably just made them up on the spot. I think I get a feeling a lot of it's his not scripted. Yeah, that was a vanity uh, vanity project for Bill Murray. To be quite honest with you, no, this is a vanity yeah, project. I think so. for Anderson. Yeah. I think for both of them, I think it's a vehicle for. I mean, he does have odd choices. He does pick odd choices. This movie is the the, the dark mirror image of uh, Aquaman for William Dafoe. William <laughs> Dafoe, both aquatic stories. William Dafoe clearly loved every moment of making this movie. He loved. He loved the character. Loved doing it. He hated every moment of Aquaman. He hated every moment he was in there. You could. He was looking around, going, "This is beneath me." I, I, I am making I'm building a new pool and I have to get this done. But he like he he had the same look on his face. You know, you're uh, saying uh, Aquaman was beneath uh, him when he did uh, the Green Goblin for Spider Man years. That's <laughs> beneath he like that, he, 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 sorry, he, this is an improvement on the Green Goblin. Uh, but I, but, but, I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure that um problem being would agree with me. You know, it's it's a it's a a role for William Defoe as an actor that he can sink his teeth into because it was yeah, so right. odd. As an actor, you look at that on the script and you go, "Great, this is what I'm doing." Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, so it's, it's antithetical. Yeah. It's antithetical to his stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. So, watch, yeah right. movie, watch William Defoe's movie, The Antichrist, right, and tell me if he can survive it. Right. <laughs> I, I, I think William Defoe was it. With, no, who was it who played uh, Jesus on Last Temptation of Christ? Him, him, him. Yeah, William Defoe. Yeah, I like that movie. Well, I, I think I like the movie. I've never seen you. I love the soundtrack. It's one of my absolute favorite soundtracks. Gabriel, yeah, yeah. Peter yeah. Gabriel yeah. soundtrack, yeah. amazing. I, I keep thinking it's just. Uh, I got. I got to check with Father Miller before I suggest it. I, you, you, I never know if it's a movie that he'll hate or if he'll like. He'll be a problem for him. Well, or be like they can't the lie. Christians were against it when it when it came out so mm. well because he had yeah, a I think you should ask him about any religious movies because you'll put him in an awkward position right, right 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 
Right, exactly. And the last temptation of Christ is definitely not a movie to suggest to a Catholic priest. <laughs> <laughs> what about The Exorcist? <laughs> no, ask, him, ask him in private. Ask him in private. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe you will like it because I know a lot of Christians really love that movie. Uh, mm. I don't know. I don't know. Fine. Listen, I think we've done this to death. I think we have. Is there anything else anybody wants to add? Well, let's give her ratings for it. All right, fine, Dan. Dan, let's start with you. What, what uh, What's your rating? I'll give it a. I'll give it a one out of ten. Sounds genuine. For yeah. looking pretty. Okay. Uh, Beggar Geek, what's, what's your rating? Ah, three. A three. Okay, three. Well, yeah. well, because of the visuals. Because of the visuals. Well, I'm going to give it a high rating, but just because of the visuals. Uh, problem being, what's your rating? I'm going to give it a six. I'm feeling generous. Uh, the problem being, uh, uh, being good to the movie. Yeah. And uh, no, what, what, what was your rating? I had two and a half. Two and a half. Okay, wow. So me, this is a solid seven and a half. Uh, in that I would again, if you're in the right frame of mind and you're channel surfing and you want to chill out and you watch something pretty, this is this is a bit this is a fun kind of this will give it's me a chill out fun. movie. Yeah. yeah, but if you want to be entertained and and blown blown away, this is not the movie for you. Right, so, right. Yeah, this no. is not this is not yeah. a uh, your, your, your big action movie. So listen, uh, we're gonna. So I'm gonna do something. A little, hopefully, a little bit more, more crowd pleasing for next week. Yeah, um, say that every week. Ooh. I always hope it is more crowd pleasing. <laughs> this is your first option. Your first oh, option okay. to use next week is. And if it's specific yeah. rim or no? No. Oh jeez, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. That's behind door number one. Behind right, two, we have another uh, very British, very British movie. Right, okay. Very, very crowd pleasing. It is mm. behind door number two, the Italian job. Ooh. Oh, that, well, there's only it's one Italian. choice for me. <laughs> I love both of those films. I haven't seen the Italian yeah, yeah, No, yeah, you but... first. What's your vote? Me? Oh, come back to me. Because I. Because I don't know whether I want to actually sit down and watch a Pierce Brosnan Bond movie again. Because um, I did like Golden Knight. This is the second one, isn't it? The Bond movie, yeah, the one that you told the third one. And the reason oh. I'm this is because I started watching it about a week ago, and I forgot how much, how much freaking fun it is. It's Hold on, is this the one about the news mogul? No, this is the one about the oil pipeline. Oh, that one. Oh, the one with uh, what's his name in it? Carlisle. What's his name? Second Carlisle. Uh, yeah, yeah. Robert, Robert Carlisle and the yeah, bullet. the one that has the bullet in the back of his head that suppresses that pain. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm picking the Italian job. Okay, the Italian job. Uh, pr problem being, what, what's your choice? Um, it's it's got to be the Italian job. I, it, it's I, I have watched it recently, but it, it is so. It's such a classic. It's it's a <laughs> movie uh mega geek what's your what's your uh what's your vote you're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off <laughs> <Italian> <laughs> job. <laughs> okay so that, it doesn't matter but what if if your vote did matter what would it be as much as i adore the world is not enough i love i love that film too i think it's a huge amount of fun i would go for the italian job as well there's more to talk All right, so we are next week we're in the self-preservation society uh, <laughs> i have an idea <laughs> there's, there's a lot of a fantastic choice. I, I love this movie. Uh, it's been a while since I watched the Italian job. I do like the I remake. Know. Now, I have to say, it's not as good as the original. The but listen, the people who criticize me are not saying it's a good, as good as the original, but they did a good good job on it. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought it was okay too. From yeah. what I remember, every time I ever saw it, the one so it was okay. unnecessary. It wasn't but, needed. But <laughs> in fairness, I do agree with Lee because he's tutting away there. Your Italian job you can't beat the original. You really the, can't. The, the remake of the Italian job is slightly less awful than the remake of the uh, uh, the Wicker Man, which is or, or Get Carter. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, saw, I, I saw the original Italian job at the BFI three years ago. It was a pristine print. It was on film. Wow. And the film was, you know, it, the film still stands up today. It's funny. It's fast moving. Well, not, not fast moving as today compared it's to today's films. No, and it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant movie. It's iconic. It's well, iconic in, in the sense, I hate using that word, but it is iconic. And it is a very much a 60s film and i think it yeah. belongs in the 60s i don't think any remake right. should try and take it out of that kind of 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and Benny Hill's in it. So there you Benny go. Hill's yeah. Benny Hill's best movie. Benny Hill when he's... Uh, I, I get, listen, this is how we're excited we are. We've, we started the discussion already, right? <laughs> uh, it's a good... Uh, yeah, it's a good choice. Fine. People forget how big a star Benny Hill was, don't they? But he, he was... Uh, he, was, he, was, he, was a star. Um, and he had his... Uh, he had his... Uh, uh, grave robbed. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about that the other day. I don't know how it came yeah. up. Fine, fine. So there you go. We 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 have done the life aquatic with Steve Zazu. We are looking forward to doing the, 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 the Italian job. Uh does anybody have anything they would like to plug? Uh, uh that people Yeah, me. I've got, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a new yeah, film. I've got a new film on my as well. I, we all do. We all I've have. Got, I've got a new yeah. film on my uh, on my uh, channel. It's called Bad Day, and it's uh, a homage to the sixties and seventies cop movies set in England. It's got loads of good stuff, and it's got the black screaming boss. It's got the cool car. It's got the um, <laughs> what is it? Women? Sorry, has it got sexy women? Of course, of course, oh, it's yeah. got sexy women. It's a mega movie. Of course, it has. Uh, so, yeah. so. I'm actually planning on watching that as soon as I finish. Uh, good, good. Maybe you, maybe you can review it with these guys. <laughs> video vault. Yes, yes. Say, yeah. Why don't we do that as a video vault? We yeah, should. Sure. Well, yeah, I have to. Uh, what if you hate, hate it, it though? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, look at it first. Like, what if we do hate it? Like? Yeah, I don't it. mind if you hate it. Seriously, no, I can take I it. I don't mind it. So. I can't do that. I can't slate a movie. I can't. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, hang on. He's a filmmaker. That's it right. He take he has to take any criticism mm -hmm. on the chin. That's why he does it. He does it, and then he knows yeah, then it's, it's the shift of criticism. If it yep. if it's good, we'll say if it's good. If it's bad, but this is be unique, right? Because you'll be what you you'll be you'll be reviewing the film with the filmmaker present. So this will be it's very exactly unique. <laughs> but yeah, but I don't think you'd be insulted if we said we didn't no, I like won't. I won't. being in a movie for God's sake if we like the rest or whatever. Just yeah. please review the thing. What's he gonna do? Murder us all or something? Yes. Before I say so, if it's not like Rebecca Gold in Ian's movie is gonna be fantastic because I liked Rebecca Gold. So let's review the bloody thing. <laughs> well, okay. maybe the week after because I want to yeah, see the yeah, Italian job. Uh, yeah, we got uh, is it, is it Italian job. No, is there anything that that that, that you want to tell the? Uh... Well, what I just want to plug is because I know this goes out on Friday, so uh, basically I want to uh, plug uh, Tarda Zone Talks. Uh, we start at uh, eight o'clock every uh, Friday night. Uh, it's left open to you. Come in. Uh, if you have Streamyard, you can come on. Give you a couple of minutes to have your say, basically. So whether you're a Whittaker fan or whether you're uh, basically just a fan of anything, we talk about uh, Cardazon talks. We just talk about anything. It does obviously gravitate to Doctor Who, but if there's any other uh, stuff out there, like we did uh, on Monday's panel, we actually had a, a hot debate. Me and Lee got pretty uh, pretty heated with our uh, opinions on James Bond, the way the character should be, and it was a great debate and. Uh, yeah, that's what we do on the third Zone Talk. So it gives fans a chance to come on. No, well, that was a really good one, mate. I really enjoyed listening I'm to that. Sorry, one. It was. It was a good, good nice I've got that book. book, book uh, did you good. agree with me or, 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 or no? no? I think well, I agreed with Noel. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm yeah. that with you. He's still my buddy. He's still my buddy. What's wrong? James Bond has to move on. Thinking James Bond has to go backwards. It's like just go and have fun. Go and have fun with it. It just oh, I kind of well, like. You agree with Lee, so you agree with Lee because Lee thinks no. Lee is not saying it has to go backwards. Lee is saying that they should get the balance. The balance it should. It, it yeah, needs to be more fun. Yeah, I, that's what I said basically. It needs yeah. to be a bit more, a bit more over the top with the villains and the the, yeah. you know, the layers and all that kind of stuff. You know, like again, yeah, again I disagree. Which is, I think all the villains, uh, Jordan Daniel Craig's run have been over the top. Look at the chief, he was over the top. Sure, didn't he tie he was, James he Bond up with a chair and torture him? If that's not crazy, yeah, that's real fun. Yeah. You know, yeah, he, he, he was the best villain. Who was the best villain? Torture Bond by laughing. <laughs> Bit of comedy, no, it doesn't work. Oh, Bond, so you know, Michael had, had a good villain. But the, you know, really, I'm just kind of disappointed they're doing another oh, day. Back again, man, because me and Lee will be off for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to go right uh, Dan, is there anything that, that you would like to tell the 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 other matters about? 
the huddled masses yes the space book channel uh Come and subscribe. Yes, if you've been watching me on here and you know some of the hate that I've poured on this particular film, if you do love it, don't take it personally. Come and find my channel, The Space Book. Come and subscribe. We've got regular Doctor Who talk. We've got regular Star Trek talk as well with, with virtually everybody you've just you've just seen in the mix that somewhere along the line we, we bring everybody in it's in a sort of rotating panel. So there's Doctor Who, Star Trek, and more to follow. Blake Seven, James Bond, and yes, movie reviews coming soon. E.T. 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 It's e. Mac and me. It's yeah. Mac and me. Fuck E.T. It's all about Mac and me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it Mac and me as well? But Mac yeah. and me is... I, I, look, I know Mac and me gets some stick, but I love that movie. <laughs> it's just so... Oh, Mac, I know it's, crap. it's crap. Short but circuit. You dared <laughs> about that little lady. Oh, uh, short circuit. Again. It's, I, I, I didn't mind re-watching it with my kids. I, I got yeah. it. So, but anyway, anyway, so listen, uh, and uh, uh, was it Friday night? Do not forget, do not forget to check out uh, the new shows, which I guess will be on my channel, um, tomorrow. I got two new shows I'm recording with mostly, mostly the, the gentlemen. There's going to be a comic book, uh, 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 improv show where you, you can join the, the studio recording. They were they're recording it as live on Thursdays. Uh, you can come join the stream, or you can or you can watch the half hour shows. We've got an improv show. You get to get you, uh, the studio, the the chat uh, uh, suggests uh, different parameters for com comic book pitches. I got a bunch of comic book writers and artists who are going to come and, and pitch, and uh, hopefully hilarity will ensue. And then we have a uh, a new geeky uh, uh, general uh, geeky. Uh, science fiction esque, uh, uh, general like knowledge show, question of sport with geeky stuff, hosted by the Spacebooks Dan, Dan Hadley. Uh, I, I, the not, not with a uh, team captain, so am I. So, yeah, go yeah boy versus the Irish man, and there's only going to be one winner. So, <laughs> He destroyed a rabbi and his call. He's 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 team fighting talk, fighting yeah. talk. Me, you are getting and any cheating from you two boys, yeah, right? Let's <laughs> keep it clean. They'll have Google open. Oh, we right could have so much fun. With this is gonna be fun. Anyway, <laughs> everybody, come, come, come back tomorrow night. We 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 are, we are both those those shows dropping. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this opportunity. Wish you all a fantastic Friday night. Have, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, and check out so any of the wondrous content which is here on YouTube. On these very channels in front of me, subscribe to everybody right below. My name is Sula Beckin, the rabbi for another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and have yourself a fantastic weekend. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Enjoy your weekend, folks. <laughs>